Ladies and gentlemen, boys and objects. Oh, wait. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> I was getting ready to join you and scream. I was about to scream a massive girls. I thought we could harmonize. And now I'm just wondering why I'm sitting next to an idiot in his underwear who calls women objects on New Year's Eve. Baby, let's just not start this podcast with a fight, okay? Uh, this is for humor. This and is for humor. Yes. Although that wasn't a joke. I am in my underwear, everyone. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and we are wearing uh, Happy New Year 2018 foam hats. Yes. Because uh, uh, we thought, what a, what a better way to bring in 2018 by recording uh, a podcast. It's 11.45 That's PM. not entirely true. Mm-hmm. What happened was Lewis didn't do his podcast and... Oh, what was that? Did you hear that? I don't know. Probably some fucking murderer. <laughs> oh, okay. We are in a uh, bad area. Yeah. Anyway, so Lewis didn't do his podcast and we had to do it on Sunday. And today's Sunday. Yeah, because it's Speared Sunday. it is 15 minutes to midnight. 15 minutes to the 1st of January. Yes. 1st of 2018. Yes. New Year. So we thought it was, yeah, I suggested. This is going to be the best New Year's we've ever had, really. We have a shit house track record with New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve sucks. Mm. If you If you try and do something... It's always going to suck. Did you have any good New Year's Eve before I met you? No, they all suck. No, the New only Year's time, Eve just sucks. The only time it's good is when you're at home with friends and you have your own little thing. But whenever you try and make an event out of it or you go to the official government events in the city... But even if you try and have sucks. a New Year's Eve party, that sucks as well. Yeah. It's like you just have to have a chill where yeah. there's no expectation. Because last year I had a party here with my friends and I accidentally encouraged one of my friends to get way too drunk. And she ended up vomiting all over the bushes. I'm so glad I fell asleep before that. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. I could see where the party was going and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to no, sleep. No, what happened last year was it struck midnight and Lewis went, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm going to bed. Because <laughs> I couldn't be bothered so, dealing with how drunk your friends were. But the hilarious thing is that you came into the bedroom, went to sleep right next to the sound system that was pumping tunes until 4am at maximum volume. Yeah. And you just slept the whole way through. We were in three rooms away and the music was loud enough for us there. And yet you still managed to be right next to them and sleep through. Do you know what? I, I can sleep through anything. I don't think I've told you this, but the next morning the speakers had actually fallen off the shelf because the the vibrations <laughs> were going so hard because it was so loud that they vibrated themselves off the shelf and onto the floor. Oh, I didn't wake up. No, I, you didn't wake up. I could sleep through 9/11. Really? Um, I just don't wake up from noise. That would be the best way to get through 9-11, I would imagine, out of all the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, than burning in a building. Yeah. So what are we What are we doing today, tonight? Uh, tonight, we, we've just decided to wear dumb foam hats and talk about how shit New Year's Eve is. I think we could go through uh, our other... What, what times have we attempted to do New Year's Eve? Last year was you had a New Year's Eve party, and that was like... A I only had a handful of friends, and it was still shit. Like, yeah. We tried to keep it small, but anytime there's hard spirits and New Year's Eve together... What did, we played Cards Against Humanity, but for some reason it was really boring. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, because really your Which friends is, it's a great don't like game. horrible jokes, whereas we do. Are you sure that's why? Yeah, they kept voting for the unfunny ones. They kept voting for the intelligent jokes, not the fucked up jokes. No, they weren't necessarily intelligent. No, I don't. I don't remember why, but yeah. And one of my friends was like, "Oh, it doesn't matter." It doesn't matter. It was just a. It just sucked. It was yeah. no. It wasn't. It was you probably know, one of, but that, the thing is, that was probably one of our better New Year's Eves. Probably, yeah, it was the best one, other than this one. I think that, um, any... Yeah, because this one we have foam hats and we just ate Red Rooster in our underwear. So. Oh, yeah, pathetic. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I was, I was, when oh, we were getting... Oh, it's only 12 minutes, we have to get... Yeah, we have the countdown time We've got the here. 12 minutes and 2 seconds to the New Year, guys. Yeah, so technically this podcast is actually going to be late. Because, I mean, I'm recording it on Sunday, but I'll be releasing it at, like, I don't know, one in the morning on Monday. But, you know, go fuck yourself, it's free. <laughs> That's your new catchphrase. Yeah, exactly. Go fuck yourself, it's free. So, um, what, do you want to talk about the one before it? What do you want to talk about? Well, I was thinking about when we got Red Rooster, mm. how pathetic it would be to work at Red Rooster on New Year's Eve. But then, I thought the only thing more pathetic than that is getting Red Rooster on New Year's Eve. So, us... Although, at least we're not wearing a fucking uniform. We're wearing foam hats. We are wearing, yeah. 
<laughs> my, my Red Rooster was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was awesome. Red Rooster's the best chain. Um, what did we do? <laughs> do you when we go went into this, yeah, what did we backwards. do? Backwards. Yeah, let's go so backwards before that. That was 2016, 2017. Yeah. Okay. And then the year before would have been 2015, 2016. That wasn't the year we went to Miss Collins, was it? I think it was when we went to that shit nightclub. We got sucked into their advertising. Or you did. You were like, it's going to be fun. No. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> Yes. That. No. You said it was going to be fun. You booked tickets and I was like, Don't oh, you know. Don't this for me. I consulted you through the whole process. And yeah. you looked up their website. You were like, yeah, look. The thing is, we just didn't know any better because we'd never done a nightclub New Year's Eve. No, because I think the year before that, we went into the city to see no, the fireworks. Don't get too confused. I know, and it was One too crowded. Time. So we decided to skip the crowds by going to a nightclub with ticketed entry. Yeah, so thinking ticketed that it would entry, be like I think limited it was about people. $70 entry with a drink or maybe two drinks each. But you don't drink. Which so is I always a rip off for that's me. That's four drinks for me. Yeah. Which is all right. I think it was one cocktail <clears throat> with quotation marks and one shot. Yeah. And the reason I do quotation marks with the cocktail is because they had special set menu of about three things that you could choose. And yeah. they're all the size of half a cup. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah, I'd it's be just surprised. a raw. Yeah, it's just... A, and then everything else you have to buy and pay for. So that was at Miss Collins. But the good things about that, aside from it being horribly too hot, There was a black dude crap. playing saxophone <laughs> for like five hours. That was fucking sick. Oh, yeah. But no, then at the end of the five hours, say. I just hated the saxophone. Yeah, so no, there, there wasn't a black dude. There was a white dude playing saxophone. Oh, and there was a black dude dancing. And next to... Okay, so... The That's way right. that the nightclub was set up was that there's a dance floor down below and then there's a uh, balcony sort of around the ledge. So people yeah. from up, up top can look down and people from down below can look up. Yeah. So in this one VIP section of the balcony, there was a middle-aged white guy with a button-down bowling type shirt just going mad on the saxophone. He might have even had sunnies. Did he have sunnies? Yeah, he had definitely had sunnies this on. This is yeah. like midnight. He's he playing sunnies. saxophone. It was he sick. He was playing sick tunes on the saxophone that was joining in with the nightclub music because obviously the nightclub, so there was Yeah, crazy that's right. Music. He, it wasn't just saxophone. He was, he was riffing up. with yeah. the, the DJ music. Yeah, which he, was, he was mic'd up. It was like obviously a professional thing. It wasn't yeah. just a guy who brought a saxophone into the nightclub. And directly next to him Dude, was... Dude, could you imagine you brought a saxophone in the nightclub? You'd pick up so good. They wouldn't let you bring a saxophone You'd upstage in the, the DJ. The bouncer wouldn't let you Man, bring if it anyone in. denies you entry because you have a saxophone, they're a shit bouncer. That would improve the club so much. Could you imagine... <laughs> could you imagine if a guy comes in wearing a suit and he's got sunnies with a fucking saxophone? Okay. Even just describing this, I know all the listeners are just getting wet. They're like, oh my god. <laughs> A um, guy with a saxophone. Okay, yes, I will I will say that that sounds alright. <laughs> For the purposes of... i got to um, learn the saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you win that one. <laughs> but what, the next... Okay, so we're standing next to him on the balcony. There was like a there black a, shirtless dude dancing. There was a professional dancer. He wasn't shirtless. He was wearing a gold shirt that looked like it was made of liquid gold. Oh, I thought he painted himself gold. No, he was wearing a shirt. Oh, okay. You were sober. You were the sober one. I, I don't know. I hate. Do you have normally a when I hate things, memory? I just forget them. And I hate them so much. But I'm like, had, I delete it from my memory. He was a mad dancer. Yeah, he, he was, was doing great. pirouettes and, he and was, shit. Yeah, he was, and he was like his body was writhing, and he was just going for hours. I don't know what. They, yeah, he, he danced for like four hours. It was. He insane. was obviously. It was like a duo, him and the saxophone. He was mainly grooving to the saxophone. Yeah. Um, and that it hilariously was the entertainment that the nightclub organized for New Year's Eve was just this, this black guy and yeah. this middle-aged white guy on sax on a balcony just jamming out. Yeah, I know. It was, yeah, it was awesome for about 30 minutes and then I just hated the saxophone and dancing was kind of fucking boring. So they did it for like four hours. Yeah, it was, it was like we got in and it was a bit nice and we got to like, oh, we're out, we're in a club. But it was just, that's the thing with clubbing after 30 minutes, it's boring as hell. Hell. Yeah, yeah, that's why people do cl- drugs and clubs because clubs you fucking can't, suck. You can't bear it for more than forty five minutes. Yeah, that's like after every every party minutes, as well. You, after after forty five minutes, hours. you're like, I want to go home. I want my bed. Yeah. I want a cup of tea. I want to start reading as a hobby because this sucks. 
Yeah, well, the last uh, even parties and shit. I can't go to parties anymore. Uh, the last party that we went to, <laughs> we went to Radio Mike's birthday party. I think we were there for twenty minutes and then <laughs> we left. He doesn't listen to your podcast, does he? No, he probably does. But I, I love Mike. I just hate parties. I don't care who you are. That wasn't a party. It was just a barbecue. Yeah, and it was it was shit. I just hate anything you know with, with more you hate than parties? twenty people. You hate people. Yeah, anything with more than twenty people, where you got to pretend like you, because really. What do, you, what do you reckon I'm going to make, 20 mates? <laughs> no. I'm going to hate at least 18 and a half of you. It was you. a nice surprise at that nightclub, though, because they had big windows, and we yeah. ended, ended up standing right next to a window at midnight, and we could, got a good view of the fireworks. Yeah, so we did. So that was a nice yeah. surprise. And then we promptly left. We were like, fuck this. Yeah. We watched the fireworks, and, and we left. And we, and even then, they're all right, but like it's just it's better on TV. <laughs> Really. Hearing yeah. the explosions is cool in real yeah. life. But it's what just too crowded. Do, what did we do the year before the that? The year before that, I think Would we went the into 14, the city. 15 New Year's Eve. Yeah, the year before that, we actually went into the city to see the fireworks, I think. 14, 15, 16, 14, 15, right? 12, 13. I think we're missing one. There's one that just doesn't seem to be in my memory. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, we went <laughs> yeah. to... So the we went to the one in the that, city so we could watch the fireworks. No, we, we tried to do a nightclub um, one then. I think that might actually have been the year before that. I'm not sure we, we did that yet. But we, we we tried to do a nightclub one. We went to Perseverance um, in Fitzroy. And it was just... There were just too many young people. Like, we were only probably 19 or 20. Yeah. But, the, like, the people there were just too young even for us. Um, they must have been underage. I'm not sure what it was. And it was a 90s night. Do you remember that? We saw the music was 90s hits. We stayed, No, but I that think, sounds like garbage. I think we stayed for an hour. We met my friend Rosie there. <coughs> I don't know. I think yeah, that sounds like garbage. Yeah, you don't garbage. remember. Yeah. 90s so music. So, I think we stayed for an hour. We were just like, this just sucks. Any so, kind of themed anything is shit. I just I hate everything. You were coming from work. You were doing something with someone. Yes, yeah, so I was probably hating my life if tram. I was coming from my job. I don't think you were coming from your job. I think it was comedy related. Oh, good. I'm probably still here. But you it. still, I think, I think you didn't want to leave. I was like, I, w- I remember texting you and being like, you have to be here at this time because it was just after you'd fucked up the New Year's, Eve, the New Year's before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I ruined one New Year's Eve. Um, yeah, so that year we stayed for about an hour. I think we only got there at 10. We stayed until like 11 or 11.30. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, we'll go out and we'll watch the fireworks because it sucks in here. So we went to try and get a spot. At a bridge on the yeah, Yarra. you just can't see shit. There were just so many people everywhere. Yeah, it was just a normal street corner, and there was probably two hundred people on that corner, and that was just one corner. And you know, that's when there's like two hundred people in a street. It's like that's when you really start praying for a <gasps> three truck. minutes. Oh my god! <laughs> you ruined my monologue about wishing for someone to run over pedestrians. I don't give. A, oh, don't. Oh, that's what you do though. When there's two hundred people in the street looking at the Baby, sky. Save 2018, that bit's too good for this year. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> Fuck up next year with that bit. Um, yeah, and then the first year we were together. I swear we're missing one, because we've been together for longer than that. Yeah, the one first... year we went into the city to see the fireworks. That was that year. It wasn't just to see the was fireworks. It? Oh, yeah, it just happened that way. But the first year, our very first New Year's together, we were just at your at your home, in your, we were just hanging out in your bedroom. Yeah. And we were just chilling and... Cuddling. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you decided you just really need to go to the bathroom. I didn't know what, I didn't know what time it was. I told, no, Lewis, I told you. I didn't know what time it was. No, don't. Listen don't. To this liar. She's trying no, to, she's trying to poison your I told you. Hey, stop you said to, to look, me that you need to go to. Listeners don't trust you, Jazz. Everybody knows that whenever I say something, <laughs> it's true. Whenever I remember it's true something, and it's accurate. And reliable. I have, a uh, what's the word? Tap like rhythm? memory? Oh, elephant. No, the one... Photographic. Photographic memory. That's got See? nothing to do I've got a with photographic that, memory. My memory's so good that I remembered what photographic means. Okay? <laughs> so, I You're remembered... so wrong. What Wait, happened? I don't want to go into the new year fighting about how bad you Was, fucked up that Jasmine first Jasmine told me, hey, at 11.59.30, go and do a wee... <laughs> Because I would really like to bring in the New Year's while you're pissing in the toilet and really? I'm by That's myself. Really? That's funny. Okay. Well, yeah. what, what I remember with my less than uh, perfect memory, my yeah. subpar memory. Here's the fiction version, yeah, guys. Yeah, the, the fiction version is that we were we were cuddling and I was checking my watch and I was like, oh, it's almost time. It's almost there. 
And you're like, yeah, it's gonna be. You know, whenever I use that voice for you, you get so offended. When I, oh, it's almost time. But that's how you you talk about yourself. Anyway, well, quickly, there's a minute thirty. I don't have time to be offended by you. Yeah. Anyway, you just fucked off at 11.30 and as you were running out the door, you're like, no, no, I'll be quick. And I'm like, you can't be quick enough. It's 30 seconds. And you're like, no, it's, it'll be fine. You'll see. And then I remember lying there in bed at 12 o'clock and hearing everyone else count down and hearing all the fireworks go off. And, and feeling me like, pissing in the toilet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just I just felt deserted and upset. And it was the first time I realized that you do not understand anything about real life you're just very funny yeah that's your one pretty train. much i think everybody knows that apart from my classic and well-known photographic memory it's the only thing i can do <laughs> at least you set the bar low from our first year i haven't really been disappointed since then. exactly that's my advice to everyone going into 2018 fuck it up royally you can only impress her from there <laughs> all milestones just fuck it up and then it's all it's all up from there uh, i ruined your first birthday too well, you weren't there the when surprise? I turned one. Well, if I was there, that's some fucking Michael Jackson shit, isn't it? You would have been one oh, as hey! well, you fuckhead. <laughs> okay, well then that would have been consensual. <laughs> I would have been a pimp baby. Oh, gross. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, are we going to count down? We've got 13 oh, seconds left. 12, 11, 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 5, 5 4, 3, 2, 2 1. 1. Happy New Year! We made it to 2018. Uh, sorry, we just paused the podcast there. We just had back. a brief intermission. Yes. Yes. Um, but now we're back. Um, and, yep. uh, yeah, we brought in 2018, right, by doing a podcast. And now there's heaps of fireworks going on outside. Yeah. We've still got our foam hats I'm on. glad that we didn't get up to miscellaneous bit at the end, because that would have been the worst New Year's. Well, we're starting off the year terribly, really. Oh, we're doing miscellaneous bit at the end. Oh, no. Yeah. I think that we that I'm going to do Miss Bit. I'm going to make this a short podcast, because it is New Year's Eve, and no no one's going to be fucking listening to it other, anyway. We should talk about one other thing what before you, we do What should we bit? talk about? You're just trying to stall. I'm not trying to stall. I just think that we shouldn't just harass them with our terrible New Year's. Yeah, New Year's Eve sucks and here's the worst part of the podcast. What no. else can we talk about? I think this year was good for... Christmas uh, sucks more than New Year's. I think this year was good overall. <laughs> oh, I am going to be going through next episode, I'm going to be going through all of my New Year's resolutions from last year um, at the start of this year and I'm going to... I've, I've listened to the podcast where I read out my goals and uh, I've written down everything that I said I was going to do. And then we're going to do a, but- a brutal review and see what I actually fucking achieved. <laughs> a brutal review. Well, I actually did most of it. I did. What if they're mean to you for you not doing They're always goals? fucking mean to me. If I put something out, they're like, oh, do a different talk type of video. If I don't put something out, they're like, oh, put something out. If I put out a podcast five minutes late, they're like, oh, I deserve this exactly on time. Even though I don't pay for it, they're always cunts. Because I've, I've cultivated a fan base of cunts, and it's my fault. So, fuck you guys, and uh, but I appreciate your support. <laughs> when I get it, very rarely. Uh, okay, yeah. so what we... This year. This year's been great for you. I think so, yeah. It's definitely been the, the best year of it's my career. It's been a very difficult year. There's yeah. been a lot of challenges, a lot of new things. Yeah. I think that's the one thing. I'm not sure how open you are. I don't always listen, like, on the podcast. I don't always listen to, mm. I, in fact, I don't listen to your podcast. No, I don't know why you would. I wouldn't listen to an hour of you talking. I'd get enough on the weekend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, like, it's just been, it's been a tough thing yeah, it has. a lot. Yeah, because I think this year for me has been like such a big year of doing new things. Like I had my, I had like my first real big tour in theatres and then yeah. I did international shows for the first time. Um, and then, you know, with the comedy special was such a giant thing for the entire year because, you know, before I had announced it, I spent, you know, I spent, I just, you know, when I decided to do it, I decided yeah. to do the special three years ago. Yeah, well, you, you did that thing that you do where you decide something way in advance and you don't tell anyone about it. And it's your secret goal that you're working towards and is immovable and you just let everyone else in on the secret at the last minute. Yeah. It makes me concerned by how many secret goals you are currently harboring that I'm not aware of. I got so much shit. What are the okay, do you have any secret goals that are immovable <coughs> that you're gonna you like you're going to do, then you don't? 
You don't want to share them now? I kept the special secret. I have a few. I, I non, Non-comedy non goals. I do have a few secret comedy goals that I'm not going to tell people. But uh, outside of comedy, I'm going to buy a house before I'm 30. You said earlier today that you are going to buy a house within two years. Well, if that I, would, be that would be one twenty-seven. No, what do you mean? No, I'm twenty-six. Baby, I'd how old are you? Then. How old are you? I'm almost twenty-five. No, no I'm twenty-four. You're not. I'm almost twenty-four. <laughs> oh, darling. Yeah, I don't know. It's fucking midnight. No, don't expect me to do math. You are currently twenty-three. Yeah, but you I'm said, almost twenty-four. No, you yeah. said in two years. Yeah. So two years from now. Yeah. Not two years from when you're twenty-four. Two years from now, how old would you be? I would be almost. 35. Okay, so you buy a house before you're almost 35. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look, point is, I'm pretty sure that I'm about 20-something. Um, and, no, I don't. I, actually, I really enjoy avocado, so I can't buy. I'll never be able to buy a house, It's actually. true. He had avo smash today. Yeah, I'm fucked. You had it I'm yesterday fucked. as well, didn't you? Yeah. How many times have you had it this week? Way too many times to buy a house, that's for sure. I mean, you just, I, if you guys support him on Patreon, just stop because he's just spending on don't avocado. Don't fucking say that because they'll actually believe you. Well, then you, you shouldn't spend all their money on avocado. Do you know how much? You're probably spending three pledges per day I don't spend Patreon money on fucking cafe <laughs> food. You're triggering me hard, okay? I've got my tour money and then I have my Patreon money. Uh, and you're your money. Yeah, fuck all. They pay us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they, I'm pretty sure they pay us an illegal amount. <laughs> no. No, well, yes, but also no. Because they... Oh, we can't talk about that. No, we can't. Oh, no, because I'm very grateful for the opportunity and I'm well, lucky okay, to be getting paid. That and I love, no. I love Triple M Modern Digital and I love the show. <laughs> so thank you very much for having us. But that was a big thing for you this year. Yeah, That's that was a giant huge. Thing. That came out of nowhere. Yeah. It is something that um, you've been talking about for a long time, wanting to do. You've always wanted to do radio. Yeah. Why, when I first uh, yeah. met you, you were like, I want to be... A, you didn't say you didn't want to be a YouTuber or a, or a comedian. You wanted to be on radio. Yeah. And I talked you out of it because I hate radio. <laughs> no, I think I think also I realized at that time that there was no way for me to Of course start not. You were radio. an 18-year-old who did nothing with nothing. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I also because I, I also think the way that I've gotten into radio, I'm so much happier than if but I that's went the, thing. the if, proper path. If someone path. wants to be in radio, you have to do something else. You can't yeah. aim for radio. You have to do something, and then they'll put you on radio because they need good people on radio. Yeah, because they want they want people like you, know, like you, you guys do... all listen to the to the radio yeah. show. If I was just some dude who started working in the office and then they put me on, no one would fucking listen. No, no one. Would. I've always thought that, and to... they wouldn't they wouldn't put you on because <coughs> they know yeah. that doesn't work and they know that regular people who are just working regular jobs and not yeah. doing something being entertainers aren't necessarily good hosts yeah yeah exactly and um, i'm happy with how i got into the radio too because i've already established my comedy outside of radio so you yeah. know i say cunt and i do controversial shit and my, yeah. i say horrible shit on stage oh yeah so it's like if if anyone were to get pissed at that it's like you know what you signed up for <laughs> i am me already you know yeah. whereas if you i started in radio, radio bosses yeah yeah and and you know and they're totally okay with what i do outside of it and i'm happy but i with think no honestly if i there. remember back i'm sure you had your own reasons for not deciding yeah. not to pursue radio but i think that i because i was really negative on radio i had no idea you're ever going to get on radio it wasn't because i was trying to talk you out of your dreams i just really hate yeah. mainstream radio yeah i think that did have an influence on you like your life was going in a different direction anyway, but you just put that that dream on a shelf or complete almost completely forgot about it because yeah, you I had think, so yeah. many other things to think about. Uh, yeah, and also I think I because you know putting shit out online, I was like, oh, I don't have to. I I just can't have someone else be the gatekeeper. I just <laughs> yeah. I really struggle with having somebody else being being in control of my success. Which is what radio is. It's like, I can think that I'm good enough for this or that, but at but the end of the day, the boss has to choose. But it's good because you're to do some sort of hybrid at this point in your career. It's yeah. something that they haven't seen before either, and they're sort yeah. of um, not struggling with, but they just don't necessarily understand. Because I would say that the reason why you're saying they don't pay you much is that they are paying you a fair amount, but they only expect you to work a certain amount every day. 
and they yeah, pay you yeah. for how much that they would expect you to work. For we get paid for four a, hours a day, your, but we're there job, easily for six. Because they they're like, oh, you're just on, uh, you're you're doing like a training type thing. They're yeah. Not not like expecting you to be there for a long t- the whole day. They just want you to come in for the show, do a good show, leave. But they don't they don't realize that with the, you, the you insane and Luke, level of commitment that we. But shown. the reason that you're showing that commitment is because you and Luke are both something outside of that and you yeah. can't put your name on anything which is half baked because that's going to affect you negatively in the rest of your career. Yeah, yeah. So I think they don't fully understand this hybrid that yes you are an entertainer and they normally do hire entertainers, but they don't hire entertainers who are in control of their own output and are in control of their own quality and their own content and have a name to live up to. Usually yeah. they just hire entertainers like this is the winner of the Latch Bachelorette. And she's very <laughs> fucking lucky to be here, oh. aren't you, Becky? Yes! <laughs> I'll say whatever you want, just please don't fire me, I need to pay rent. <laughs> don't worry, they, they have Instagram deals for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but um, no, I think, yeah, I just think that, yes, yeah, it's, it's like you say, I can't do anything without going fully into it. No, you can't, and for you, to, it. for you to pick up radio, you have to do it properly, and they're, yeah. because they'll, they've put you in the pre-radio game. We're essentially in a training program, but me and Luke are pretending that we're on drive. Yeah. Like, that's the level of commitment that we're showing. And I think that that will make us move forward yeah, oh, yeah. On, towards the path like of very that. Because that's the ultimate they're goal. They're very impressed with how much commitment you're giving. But yeah. it's just sort of unsustainable because they haven't given you the team. Yeah, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I, I do oh, think that we're sure. going to get there. Oh, for sure. I think so. You'll get there very soon. Wink. Stop hinting at shit that <laughs> I haven't even hinted at yet. All right, let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? With Wait, that, we were talking about your year. Okay, I was talking about my year. I also did what? What did we talk about? My comedy special. You did your comedy special. You yeah. did your tour of Australia. Eighteen yep. dates. Yes, eighteen dates. A couple thousand Biggest people. Biggest tour ever. All More independently. Than a couple we did it. Yeah, that you was very big for me as well. Yeah, Jazz organized a whole tour if you're unaware. I had my own business, you weren't my only client. Yes. Although people struggle to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Even my family like, oh, you're just doing this for Lewis, right? I'm like, no. no, I am running a business. I have other clients. I have things that I do regularly. Yeah. I, I've, you know, when I lodged my tax return, I was like, oh, yeah, this tour did pretty well this year, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, doing that and trying to try to juggle with, normal work and yeah there's this always this weird thing when you're an entrepreneur where you're starting to make s- some good money and you your work demands all of your time and all of your energy but it's not enough money forever like it might be seasonal yeah. or it might be almost enough and every lewis you went through this a couple of years ago where you're the amount that your fruits are bringing in, the monetary amount isn't enough to sustain you. Yeah. It's sort of so difficult to figure out where to divide your time between traditional employment and going head on with your business. Yeah, because I I always view jobs as like a tool where you get to, to pay for your main thing. But yeah, when you're at the weird stage where the main thing is heaps of work but doesn't pay enough for you to live without a job, that's really difficult. It's very, yeah. But the thing is, if you don't put all that work in, you're never going to get past that point. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like a bottleneck you have and, to Yeah, have so to now, I've, now I've made it to the point where I'm yes. paying myself below minimum wage every yes, week. very so, happily. Woo, living with my parents, 23, almost 24. But <laughs> I'll get there. I thought you were 27. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm young for my age. Or old, <laughs> old for my looks. I don't know. I don't know what I am. I am uh, an age. I'm in my 20s. I'm a millennial. You're a millennial. Yeah. You also got your first videos that went over a million, didn't you? Was uh, that, yeah. You'd never had that before? Uh, I think back in the early days of Facebook, that Ping of Pete one got over a million, but you couldn't see Facebook views then. Oh, yeah, you couldn't see views, yeah. so we couldn't actually know. But yeah, so the, the vaccine one got over a million. I think there was more than didn't that. Didn't you rant about the girl on the tram? Oh, yeah, I actually did a couple I think this that year. one went more yeah, than that a one got Yeah, that one got two million. I think there might have been three videos that got over a million views, but that vaccine one just hit five million, which is fucking crazy. I think that, and and that's one of the rare times where I agree with that, where I go, yeah, that's my best video. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Because often, what you mean. oh, it, it's that in the Ping of Pete one that that 
that really? early, early. Yeah, I really. Peter that, Pete's one of your best videos. Th- that first one. That was a good one. Yeah, that one. That one was before Ping and Pete was a character. I don't think uh, he even had a name in that one. Quite fond of Pete. When's it he was, coming around again? I hate that cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know that you don't like him, but everyone else, you know, doesn't hate him that bad. So maybe you should pop around every now and then. Ah, uh, he'll probably come back in a little review, which is um. Oh, uh, yeah, which next year videos are going to be much more consistent. Just, I think, going through my 2017 when Lewis I did the read... Lewis again. <laughs> no, yeah, but <laughs> when I wasn't doing... Like, th- in 2017, I did so much new giant projects. And I was like, I was like with the comedy special, I was like, as soon as no. the comedy special's done, Look, I can do videos. I and think, then we got the radio show. I think people can relate to what you're saying. It's because imagine every time you're trying to do something consistent, something old, but you have to do it consistently, like practicing on your piano or going to yeah. the gym. If that never works if every month just when you, something new that just happens settles down and you're like, okay, I'm into the swing of things. Yeah. In the next month, you've got something else that's new and huge and completely throws you out of whack. So that's been this whole year for you, Lewis. Yeah, but just said like every three months is a giant new project. Like it was, first it was the tour and then it was like the crowd fund. And then after the then half then after the crowd fund, it was like actually getting ready to do the special and organizing the special. And that was around the time that you started in talks with the radio because you were in yeah. talks with the radio a lot earlier. Yeah, yeah. Because and then and then while we were getting ready and organizing the comedy special, I was talking to the radio people and then trying the to middle, get a show. And then and you just got a show. And then no, even before that, then after we organize okay maybe we could get a show we started doing demos so me and luke are learning yeah. how to do radio while i'm getting the special ready and, and then you're we trying get to the finalize show. the show for your special because yeah. deciding the content to go <coughs> in that is difficult yeah yeah like the oh, lineup so and and how to long... film it and where to film it all yeah. that shit and then uh then, then you I'd... got you got the show then we got very the show. soon after that you had to jet off to new zealand when yeah. you practice the the lineup for the special, you practice the yeah. special show in New Zealand, and also did your first international tour. Yeah. And then when you came back from that, you're straight back on air, but you're also trying to review to see what what was good and what you have to cut out from all yeah. the shows you did in New Zealand because you're filming your special in what was it a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then we actually then then I had to sell the tickets for the special. Which is another promo thing that I got to do shit for. Oh, God. Can you never pre-sell tickets for something via a crowdfund before yeah, we even have the venue locked in? Oh, really? Who was it a bitch for? Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, not you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did the show, and then it was back on radio, and now it's all fucking done. Well, it's not done. i got to edit it, and then i got to... And you're off to... Have you announced where you're live? Yeah, it's going to be in Brisbane. Yeah, off to Brisbane in the new year. Yeah. For the podcast, which is actually within the next couple of weeks. So what episode is this, Lewis? Do it's, you have any idea? This is episode 96 or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. I think so there's going to be a, a couple of 99.1s. <laughs> no, this is 96. We've got four weeks. I think that's enough time to sell a live podcast in Brisbane. Well, as long as we organise it. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we're going to organise it this oh, week, yeah, hopefully. Oh, yeah, I have to organise it. Yeah, we're going to get onto it. No, it's my fault. It's definitely going to happen. Uh, don't fret out. But yeah. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Year, Brisbane is such a great city. Brisbane is full of animals. I think they're going to go off their tits. The only thing is that I'm sad that Mandy probably won't be there, although I wouldn't put it past her yeah, to true. fly up. Don't, please don't yeah. waste your money. Please don't waste your money. Mandy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's. I think that's why my videos Come have to been... Brisbane. I don't know. It's like I got this... this it's like with YouTube and shit, I've been pretty shitty with uploads, but with my career and the amount, like I've oh. never put out more content in my life. It's it just great. hasn't and all been on YouTube. And you've got into such a good flow with the show on Triple M Modern Digital. Yeah, yeah, with oh, the sorry, radio Triple show. Sorry, Triple M Modern Me. But um, I think next year, there's no new stuff. Like I'll release the comedy special and then I'm going to tour in September. I'll have the show and I... I I hope <laughs> that's going to be the only well, no, things a, that I'm you've, doing. You've already got a few things. Yeah. You've got your live podcast in January. You've got your, when you're special release, you're doing a promo tour to the cinemas in major cities to yeah. do a premiere, which you should yeah. all come to. It's going to be really good. And Lewis will be doing a live set before. Is that 
what you're planning on doing? I think so, yeah. Just a couple, couple yeah, of drinks. Yeah, just a little bit. You get yeah. to meet Lewis. Um, and it will be done before it's actually released online, right? Yeah, because I, cause I, was, I was thinking, man, I would really love to do a movie premiere. But then I was like, oh, that doesn't happen for comedy specials. And I was like, well, it does for mine because I'm going to fucking organise it. Because I think that would be so cool. Are you going to organise it? No, you're going to organise it. <laughs> But it was my idea, so I was it. I'm sorry, was it? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I stole that idea from Kevin Hart. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I stole that idea from we Kevin Hart. We can argue Hart. about whose idea it was. It was like Kevin Hart's <laughs> idea. If you, if you really want to. I'm sorry. Be... I don't. I didn't know that it was Kevin Hart's idea when I told it to you. <laughs> no, I was when he re- when he released his comedy special. He was actually no, he wasn't doing premieres. He was just showing up to theaters because he's 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 that big that he can actually get his shit in theaters. Oh, anyway. No. Um, yeah, so I think that next year and is going to be a lot better with videos. And hopefully there'll be a step up on radio as well that you won't necessarily be on. Stop hinting at shit, okay? I wasn't hinting. You're yes, you're hinting. hinting as fuck. I always say, is that not a goal? Yes, it is a goal. You have a goal. Yeah. You'd like to be on FM radio. Yeah. So we'll see where that goes. Yes, we will. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think with next year, it's going to be a lot better with videos just because I'm not doing new giant things and we moved you into a film space i think that will really help yeah yeah like we've set up a film space as well so i think that will be a lot better it's i don't know it's funny i got this when i put out my montage video on youtube i got this one comment from some person going oh this channel's shit now it's like mate (laughs) i am not a fucking channel i've done so much shit you've just only been looking in one place i hate those cunts it's like you're not a channel you're you're a comedian you're an entertainer and you have a channel Yes, it's like, dude, those kinds of people are like, oh, why, does, why doesn't he do fucking Lou Review every two days just for me, even though I don't do anything for him? It's like, man, I hate those people that, that are like, it's like, I don't know, it's like when a musician is touring and he doesn't release songs for a bit. Oh, you suck now. It's like, no, he's performing to the people who care about him enough to show up to the show. Yeah, it really sucks when they perform to 10,000 people sold out in a city. Yeah, you should be what releasing a, a song on SoundCloud for free out. for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Let's do Misfit. Yeah, we'll do Misfit. Were you... Did I tell you about the guy who fucked his mum's friend? How long ago was this? This is a while ago. Vasilios is back. I don't know. I don't know. Vasilios. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that. But um, this is Vasilios. Oh. I can see Vasilius' real name and I know who that is. Yeah. Oh, you, you cheeky cunt. Um, all right. So, <laughs> hey, Lou, it's Vasilius. Stop reading it. I will read I'm it to you. It. You always laughing. read ahead I was and then you go, I know who that, that fan is. I okay. was just laughing about that. I all right. Reading stop reading ahead. I, I won't read. You always do that. Okay, just read the damn thing. It's 12.30. Shush. Oh, we'll no. be finished soon. Okay. Hey, Lou. It's uh, Vasilios again. And as you can tell by the title, I fucked my mum's friend again. No. Quick backstory and a recap. How many times have they fucked now? Uh, just once, I believe. But his mum doesn't know. Um, and also, mm-hmm. his mum lives in Canberra. Vasilios does not live in Canberra. Okay. So every time he flies up to hang out with his mum... Coincidentally, he also fucks his mum's friend. Coincidence? No, he does it on purpose. He's like, well, I'm, you know, uh, he, I bet in, in his head, he's like, I'm going to fly to Canberra to see my mum because I'm such a good son. But in the back of his head, he's like, I'm going to fuck her, mate, real Are you good. sure he doesn't consciously know that he's flying to fuck her friend? And then he's like, well, while I'm there, might as well say hi to my mum. You know what? It probably started off as seeing his mum's friend, seeing mum. But there's now it's turned into seeing his mum's friend. Is his mum's friend a hottie? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't said he hasn't sent any nudes of it, which is good. You shouldn't do that. That's Please illegal. Don't. Um, so I came back to Canberra, and before I came back, I got in contact with my mum's friend. We we ended up booking a hotel. Yeah, so it's exactly what I said. He was like, "Oh well, if I'm going to see mum." I should see her mate as well, and he's pre-booked it this time. Yeah, they booked a hotel. We booked a hotel, uh, and in the build-up to this, she sent me photos of her new tits. She got a boob job since I've been back. Facilius, why didn't you forward them? Ah, you rude dog. (laughs) (laughs) No, please don't. See, I reckon any woman who gets new boobs and is single would just turn into a giant whore for the first six months because there's no way you're spending 15 grand on something and not showing anyone. 
Um, right? I don't have enough information to be able to theorize on that. I think so. I don't know Because otherwise it's just a waste of money. I don't know anyone who's done that. Why would it be a waste of money? Because it's like me spending $15,000 on a tattoo on my chest and I never take my shirt off when I go to the beach. I've got a tattoo that I prefer not to show people. Yeah, but you didn't spend fifteen grand on it. That's what I'm saying. You He's, spent a okay, couple hundred so bucks on it. So what you're thinking is if it's more like a Rolex. Yeah. You want to show a Rolex. If I spend fifteen grand on a Rolex, I'm going to wear it. I'm not going to leave it in its case. If I so spend you... fifteen grand <laughs> on my tits, I'm going to show them off. I'm going to jump on Tinder. Okay. Otherwise, it's just a waste of money. Okay. You know? I mean, I'm doing that sh- shit to fix my low self-esteem. You too. <laughs> uh, so the day I was meeting up with her, I decided to get on some MD. So I got that and I took about a stick of weed, oh, a 20. God. I don't know what this cunt's saying. I don't buy drugs. A stick of weed, a 20. That's this gibberish to Are me. you sure this lady's hot if you have to get that high to fuck her? Maybe this guy's just a bit of a drug addict too. <laughs> and a bottle of Captain Morgan, uh, spice oh. rum, and a box full of condoms. Well, we, at box. least he's prepared. Uh, when I got to the hotel, we started by taking MD and drinking. We fucked a few times, then had something to eat and kept drinking and taking more MD. Then later, she said, this is his mum's friend and they yep. have no idea. Yep. Later, she said, I'm going to eat your ass. Yep. So she gave me a rusty trombone while I watched the new Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> A rusty trombone while watching Pirates of the Caribbean. Man, this guy's living his best life. Dude, he's going to have to tell his mum. Why? Because it's his mum's best friend. Okay, so can you imagine that conversation? Hey mum, you Do you know... like Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, no. coincidence, I got a rusty trombone from your mate while I was watching Pirates of the Caribbean. Isn't Johnny Depp a good actor? <laughs> Well, how else is he supposed to tell her? I wouldn't tell my mum like that. No? I wouldn't tell my mum at all. Why does she have to know? Because she sees her friend every day. It's her friend's business. You're just... You suck. Well, I think that his mum's life would be better without knowing that that happened. But it will keep happening and she's going to find out. That's what I'm saying. She has to know. Why is it going to keep happening? Because this guy is an evil person and he thinks with his dick. For sure. Can you just find He's flying to Canberra not... to get a rusty trombone. <sighs> no one's that much of a Pirates of the Caribbean fan. <laughs> okay? God. If you really want to... I'm sure it's on Netflix. You don't have to fly to Canberra and get a tongue up your ass while you're watching it. <laughs> okay? It's not, it's, this isn't a Pirates of the Caribbean situation. Okay, this move, is okay, a thinking with going. his dick thing. You're obviously not listening to my opinion today, so keep going. Uh, We continued fucking a few more times, and I ended up having two condoms fall off and go in her, which I had to fish out. Okay, so this is why he needs to tell his mum, because she's going to be pregnant soon. Well, did they... I'll read on. Did they go get a plan B? Doesn't sound like it. Uh, And then after the six-ish route... Oh, so he... (laughs) After all that, he gave her a six... Dude, she ate your ass while you watched Pirates of the Caribbean. That's no, at least know. a seven and a half. Doesn't it say... Does it say... Where, can you show me where it is? He said here. But no, after about the sixth route, they had sex six times. Oh. He's not saying... See, this is why whenever you do Miss Fit, I just reckon the people at home shaking their heads being like, you did no, not No, read that question. shit. This is, the, this is this guy being a fucking idiot typing. He goes, six I-S-H. That's six-ish. That's like six and a it half. Says, then after about the six-ish route. So I think he's. Th- it's because of the preceding words. You can tell that. TH, mean- you fuckhead. Six TH. No, it means that he was so high that he doesn't know it was the sixth. It could have been the fifth and it could have been the seventh. I bet he didn't even make it to Canberra. He probably fucking passed out on the plane and hallucinated <laughs> all this shit. Um, he's probably bent over an up, airport chair. Thing, right? think he's getting a rusty trombone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Get him, Johnny Depp. Or <laughs> <laughs> watching Pirates of the Caribbean. After the 6TH, you fuckhead root, uh, I rolled some joints and went out and got cooked, went back, fucked a few more times, and then went to sleep. And when I woke up, we fucked again. I ended up getting going through about 10-ish condoms. See, 10-ish. It's 10-ish, 10-ish okay. Um, so, yeah, it was a sick night, and I thought I would give you an update. There might be more to come. 
Well, I don't need any more. You've just explained you fucking this girl. It's this is now this, a shit story. This entire story is just about how you fuck someone. This is not an update. You know what it is? This guy can't tell his mum, so he's like, I've got to tell someone. <laughs> so he's emailing me. Um, yeah, man. Uh, she's pregnant. So, I don't know. Well, for, okay. Just separately to the story. If anyone ever has a condom come off during sex and you have to fish it out, yeah. One, go get a plan B. Two, you're probably wearing the wrong condoms. Look for the extra small next time, Vasilios. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be coming off your dick. Oh, that's true. All right, well, thanks for emailing in, Vasilios. You got your mum's friend pregnant and you have a little dick. I look forward to the next update. Uh, let me know how Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is uh, and whether There's or six not... six of them now, I think. Six, ah. Six-ish. Okay, well, let me know how episode six is, and let me know if it's any good getting a rusty trombone, or if you should just leave butt play out of it, alright? Thank you very much for listening, guys. Sorry this one was a little bit short. It's New Year's Eve, and I'm exhausted. But, uh, yeah, I will talk to you next Sunday, and I'm going to go through my goals, and uh, expect a lot more regular content from me next year. Also, the comedy special's coming out next year, too, so that's fucking cool. It's this year. This, oh yeah, As this year. Our hats. Yeah, shit. All right. Well, I'll see you. And uh, I'm 23, I think.